Texas. They need a win to stay alive here in the third place matchup between the Horns and Sooners. Time for the second varsity eight battle. Ashley Carpenter, the constant for OU. Shot of the uh, Texas boat here. Yeah. The are getting set there with her equipment. OU has taken the first two races in this final day of the second varsity for the first varsity court. Stroke her, Mel Eckert, with her hat turned backwards. She likes to say that means she's ready for business. This is going to be a tough challenge for this uh, second varsity game. Despite the upset at the hands of Tolson in the first round, this exact boat was able to take down the goal. The wind's busting. Flag blowing. Water the jump. Launch you see in front of us uh, has referee Court de Haas, who's the head referee of this regatta, and he falls in behind the boats to make sure that they have a fair race and that there are no clashes. He was actually uh, officiating the race last year in the second varsity age race between Texas and Oklahoma when they clashed doors at the beginning, and it actually caused a detriment to Texas that uh, Oklahoma jumped out, and, and Texas never recovered last year in the second varsity age race. Texas falls behind a bit. As we said, they had a good showing earlier in the evening, but Oklahoma, their second varsity eight was upset by Kansas State. Look, look at the powerful strokes there as they're increasing their lead with each one. Looking at the times, uh, this is going to be a tough race for Texas uh, to come out with a victory over Oklahoma, but I'm sure they're inspired and never know what's going to happen in a rivalry. It's a little bit of a new lineup for Texas at the coming into the first session of the weekend. Uh, one of the rowers in the uh, second varsity eight uh, was ill and had to be taken out of the boat. And uh, they inserted uh, uh, Lauren Nail into the bow seat of this boat, of the Texas boat. We can see Oklahoma with a nice, comfortable lead here about of a length on Texas. But there we see uh, Lauren Nail. And uh, she got moved in this boat, and the thing that was nice for her was her sister actually is in four seat of the boat, and uh, her sister is Olivia Neal, and Olivia is a senior, and Lauren is a freshman, and they didn't really anticipate racing in the same boat this season, uh, but because of some illness and unforeseen circumstances, Lauren was put into this boat with her. Uh, they're both from St. Catharines, Ontario. Um, they have a really close bond, and you see them often hanging out together, and I know the reason she came to Texas was because her older sister was here. She wanted to have the opportunity to be on the same team with her for at least one year. One other rower in the boat is a local product, Angela Bumstead from Mike Travis, who apparently is highly superstitious. telling me, I think I was like a sophomore in high school, she was like, no, I only wake up on even numbers. And ever since then, I was like, I have to wake up on even numbers. So I wake up at 524 every single morning. I can't wake up at 525, 527 has to be 524 or 526. And if I wake up on an odd number, it's going to be a bad day. That's what I've decided. It takes quite a bit of effort, almost as much as rowing, making sure you, you follow that pattern, but if it works, why not? I think that's a, kind of a mentality that you'll see in a lot of rowers, not maybe to that extreme in terms of superstition, but trying to find a very regimented way of going about their lives. Uh, I think it fits well for you to succeed in rowing, to have that mindset. So rowers to succeed in that, have that mindset coming in, where they want to do things in a structured way. And we can see Angela Bumstead right in the middle of this boat. She's the fifth rower from your right. When you talk about seats in a boat, you count from the bow and uh, count back. So to the far right of your screen, you have uh, Lauren Nail in one seat, and then you count them down, and you get to Olivia, and then Bud Stitt sitting in front of her. Like Travis that you're just walking around campus you're on the 40 acres one day when a member of the rowing team spotted her and said hey you're tall come here pulled her over next thing you know here she is in the boat in the Longhorn invitation 
Yeah, I think she thought she was going to try out for the band, but uh, things have worked out well for her. Things not working out well right now for the Longhorns, who have seen their deficit increase. Oklahoma putting together a solid first thousand. Because again, they're looking to win their third straight race here in the, in the battles that count. The final round, Sooners yelling from the dock. In that shot here, we can see Jennifer O'Grady in the Oklahoma boat. And uh, she's from Ada, Oklahoma. She's a walk-on. Her favorite uh, athlete is Kevin Durant from Oklahoma City Thunder. Uh, I'm sure it bothers her a little bit that he was a former Longhorn. But she's gotten past that because of his great performances for Oklahoma City. And uh, she got interested because her sister was on the team. And uh, winning Conference USA last year and going to NC2As were her favorite memories. And she loves when John Garden, the coach, uh, uh, assistant to uh, at the Oklahoma it reminds them to be awesome. That's his constant reminder. Be awesome. Oklahoma doing that now. Just the Crimson crew heading towards the footbridge. You can see if you're on the dock heading back to the rowing center after giving them their support moments ago. And that is coming in the last 500. That's a pretty substantial lead. Uh, for Texas to try and come back on. Uh, Oklahoma has definitely got their number here on this uh, particular day. They will meet again two more times, and I know that Texas has a lot of work here. They hope to catch Oklahoma in this second RCA category by the Big 12 or Conference USA Championship. Yeah, and that Big 12 Championship will take place May 3rd in Oklahoma City, and then the Conference USA's will be a few weeks later on May 17th in Tennessee. That Tennessee course is a really nice course, though. It, it's just set up. It's for six lanes across and wonderful racing conditions there. It's a great regatta. Here comes Oklahoma on the final 250 meters. Lady Betzel is trying to rally the troops for Texas. And you can see with her right hand, she's moving her hand. She's actually steering the boat with her right hand. And she's speaking and urging them on with uh, the microphone at her mouth. Oklahoma just about an insurmountable lead at this point. It's going to be disappointing for Texas uh, coming in. I know you get excited about your rivalry. Uh, sometimes it doesn't work out for you. They've got to remind themselves it's 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 uh, there's multiple chances this year. And actually last year the varsity eight lost to Oklahoma all year, but then beat them at Conference USA in a very dramatic race. Uh, it was great full time from the Longhorn to the finish. They got closer and closer and finally beat at the Conference USA. So the defending champs returning to form as they take down Texas in the second of varsity eights. Oklahoma definitely had the most speed here. It was not helped by Katie Betzel getting into the buoys here a little bit. Texas did a good job of not letting it really stop them, but they needed a lot of things to go just right to catch the uh, Sooners today. Texas dealing with some illness on the boat as well as they fall to Oklahoma. Tulsa, Kansas State, coming up from the lake. <laughs> 